What's going on, everybody? Eric Lindquist at Stochastic here on the Odd Trapper Channel coming to you with another edition of Lindy's Links, Likes, and Locks NBA. Hit that like button, subscribe button, notification bell. Goes a long way for me on this video. Goes a long way for you. That way you pick up a prize whenever great content is going live here at our little neck of the YouTube woods, my friends. The NBA streets getting dim. Getting bleak, but you know what? We can mine out a little bit of value here. Sign up down below for Odd Shopper. Get that positive EV tool. Give yourself an opportunity to really smash and react to some of this news that's wild. Because did Joel Embiid playing ever come into anybody's mind? They might get fined again for how late this came out. Nobody had any idea what is going on. And also, they're losing at halftime here to the OKC Thunder. We'll see how that one progresses. We shall see. We shall see, my friends. But sign up for that down below. And then we'll talk a little bit of MGM later. But producer Jacob's on hand. We're going to fly. And yes, you heard me fly through these games here in the NBA streets. Producer Jacob, let's get to the picks. Game number one, the Portland Trailblazers taking on the Charlotte Hornets. So wild to see Charlotte favored by a point and a half over anybody. But that should just talk to the, not insignificance, because we're seeing DeAndre Ayton play some legitimately good basketball, win healthy, and playing for this basketball team. So shout out him, but keeping them honest. You got Scoot Henderson. He's got to figure it out. Chris Murray, he's playing a lot of minutes. And Jabari Walker, Delano Banton. Oh, boy. They're starting to really, 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 really figure it out. But Tamani Kamara, now out for the rest of the season here. They're fun, heralded little rookie that they had. Who did he get drafted by? He got drafted by somebody else. I'm trying to remember who. Who cares? We don't have the time for that. Brandon Miller, questionable. Miles Bridges, questionable. Grant Williams, questionable. That's three of their starting five right now. Yeah, under 213 and a half is going to be the lean, but tons of injury news to mine out of this one. Be paying close attention next game. Speaking of paying close attention, the Lakers taking on the Wizards, and the Lakers had everybody in action. They absolutely put the gauntlet down on Toronto. That is for sure. 128, 111, schlacking on their part. I think that probably keeps Anthony Davis and LeBron James fresh enough where they can go out and do the same thing and just blow them out in three quarters and move on with their lives. We shall see, friends. We shall see. But it's going to be increasingly more difficult for these uh, Washington Wizards in this spot because Kyle Kuzma is questionable, maybe wants to face his former team. Marvin Bagley got hurt, left to the locker room. Does he play on the back-to-back? -back? I'm not sure. But Rashawn Holmes, if he ends about two. Who are they going to play at center? Anthony Gill? He's not going to do jack diddly squat against Anthony Davis. Anthony Davis points props potentially to the moon, but the Lakers plus 12 and a half. Going to be a lean for me here. Good stuff. Moving ourselves along. Sorry, my, minus 12 and a half. That's an important caveat. Oh my God. Thank you, producer Jacob. Gave me the... I would have looked dumb and everybody would have made fun of me in the comment section. It would have been a pointless thing. The Detroit Pistons, the Atlanta Hawks, first play on the board. It's weird. It feels like a lot of these slates, like one, two games, they just go by the wayside and then we move on with our lives. It is what it is. But I look at this one, friends, and I see DeJounte Murray, 39 and a half PRA in a blowout potential spot. Yeah, if it's a blowout, probably going to be a lot of him. But Jalen Johnson's back, and Jalen Johnson's going to cut into those rates in a pretty significant way. It's a guy who's a 14.7% assist rate this season, which isn't exactly nothing. He's got a 58.7% true shooting, and 18.5% usage has gone up, playing 34 minutes a game in the absence of Trey Young here. So just telling you, 39.5 PRA, a little bit high for DeJounte Murray. I like it. Popping over on Odd Chopper. Speaking of Odd Chopper, let's talk about them quick. OS Premium Tools Discord Insider Access, $14.95 weekly, $49.95 monthly. Sign up using promo code LINDY at the link below. I have nothing else to add. 20% off, $12 for the first week, $42 for your first month. Awesome sauce. Uh, yeah, I just said awesome sauce. Expert picks, Discord Premium Tools, everything you could possibly want, and more. My premium betting card, everybody's premium betting card here at Odd Chopper on a day-in, day-out basis. Back to the picks we go. Oklahoma City, Um, let's do a little check-in, shall we? They're 195 in the four minutes left in that game. If they pull this win off, having Jalen Williams and uh, I almost said Andrew, Aaron Wiggins starting, good Lord almighty, what a time to be alive. But I will say, this is definitely one that I'm a little bit worried about what we're going to get on the uh, Boston side of things to just go gung-ho and just jam them here. I think SGA, Jalen Williams, have the ability to just come back tomorrow, save them for a game, utilize their entire bench, and now bring their two best players in, and then Jalen Brown's questionable, sat out last time. I don't know what to make of it, but the over 227.5 is the thing that projects out the best here. It's ever so slightly positive EV, but it's like 0.4% or some garbage that I'm not going to diddle with. If you wanted to, go right ahead. Over 227.5, it's rare that a lean would even be positive EV, but that should just tell you on a nine-game slate, I know there's going to be a prop exposure. Be smart with your bankroll. We got MLB rocking right now. Be smart with your bankroll. 
We got Indy. We got Brooklyn. Miles Turner over 21 and a half PRA. I like it. And here is why. We're taking on a true big. We're getting true big here in Nick's Claxton on the other side of things. And well, that's going to create an opportunity for Miles Turner to be out on the floor a lot. And also, I'm taking an over on a guy who's listed as questionable that I expect to play a lot of minutes as is. And it's a 230 total, which is outrageous for Brooklyn. Again, doesn't really do anything for Indy. Indy always plays up in pace. And obviously, Pascal Siakam going to cut into these rates more and more just as we accumulate sample size. It already has happened over the last couple of months. But Miles Turner, 21 and a half PRA. You don't see these kind of numbers for Miles Turner PRA. I like it. It's a half unit play next game milwaukee on a back-to-back -back here damian lillard he's going to be out yet again probably i mean that's just wild the run out that we've had here we saw uh chris middleton play some good basketball we saw mr Giannis antetokounmpo now do they play lillard who's listed as questionable patrick beverly got dinged up does he end up playing here on the back-to-back -back? uh it didn't look great he did return to the bench here recently in that third quarter but uh not feeling super, super gung-ho about this one either. Desmond Bain, oh, he's going to be out for tomorrow. That's already been announced as is Vince Williams, Marcus Smart, Utah Watanabe. Do they even come back before the end of the season? Time will tell, friends. Time will tell. But Memphis plus 14 is actually going to be the lean here because I do think if you take Giannis or Lillard off the floor or something there, you're going to see some, some shift to this number. And we've seen better play, at least, or slightly better play from Jaron Jackson Jr., Santi Aldama, Scotty Pippen Jr., Luke Kennard playing point wild times friends oh probably don't bet this though bet this though toronto taking on minnesota toronto on a back-to-back -back. minnesota on a back-to-back -back. but minnesota they play everybody on these back-to-backs emmanuel quickly rj barrett just got back played pretty well even though they got completely schlacked in that second half by the lakers i don't know if they play on this back-to-back -back. and i think that's where this advantageous just take a stab at it is because if they were both out and you had like Liberty Liberty starting and such, I have this closer to 17. I think that's good enough for me to just take a tiny, tiny, small little play. It could even be a quarter unit for you. And then you fire it up, friends. Check it out. Good stuff. I like it. Minnesota minus 14 and a half next game. Bet MGM friends, sign up for it down below. If you have DraftKings, if you have FanDuel, add Bet MGM first bet safety net up to fifteen hundred dollars in bonus bets. If your first bet loses, that's really all I have to say. It's an unbelievable opportunity. Sign up for it down at the link below. Unbelievable opportunity again, whether it's hundred dollars, two hundred dollars, or fifteen hundred that you have at your disposal for your bankroll. Get your bonus bets in the event that first bet loses, and if it wins, collect your winnings get yourself a little bit more to that bankroll great opportunity for you down at the link below only if you're 21 and over if you have a gambling problem please call 1-800-GAMBLER two games to go let's go i'm gonna call this my favorite play on the board i have a lean like lock yeah oh we're gonna do a little lean with it, with it. coming up a little bit later here but i think this is my favorite one trey murphy Jalen Suggs. I'm going to be combining them in a single game parlay, or you could look at the fantasy optimizer and try to find something where it's maybe more advantageous to take an adjusted three line. But Orlando taking on the New Orleans Pelicans. Obviously, the Pelicans, very disappointing out and going up against the Phoenix Suns. We need them to lose. We'll talk about that next. But Orlando, this is going to be one of those spots where Jalen Suggs, we're starting to see some really, really good stuff out of him with the complexion of this basketball team and just wide open shots. Because follow Bancaro, Franz Wagner. I mean, they are just... Orlando's definitely one of those teams that I'm just going to enjoy watching for the next however many years. Defensively, second in adjusted defensive rating, only 24th in adjusted offensive rating. They've had a pretty easy strength of schedule, but you can't hold that against them. I could, but like that'd be pretty mean of you. Anywho, I'm looking at a little bit of this usage here from the Orlando side of things, and also with the New Orleans side, where three of the previous four games, you saw a sub-20% usage for Trey Murphy, despite, despite the fact that Brandon Ingram's out. That's a little bit surprising to me. And this usage has not gone above 19.5% for Jalen Suggs. I think you want to be firing this up for a guy who's a 40%, yes, 40% three-point shooter in Jalen Suggs. Phenomenal opportunity. He's firing just enough threes here. We're at 1.5 and at minus 115, minus 125. I think these are very, very doable. And I might as well just throw it together and hope this game stays competitive because New Orleans has played a lot of non-competitive basketball games. They made that a little bit closer than it would appear against the Suns the other night. So I want to at least throw that out there. But you've got one guy in Trey Murphy here in the starting unit now. He's a 37% three-point shooter, which is actually 3.5% worse than his 2023 numbers. Still a 60% true shooting. Still somebody they want chucking the basketball. So over two and a half threes for Trey Murphy. Over one and a half for Jalen Suggs. Put them together. Put them in a sweater. Beautiful stuff, my friends. Last game of the night up next. 
Cleveland taking on Phoenix. I'm worried, friends. I'm very, very worried because if I knew that we had Donovan Mitchell in and everybody in for Cleveland, I would be jamming plus six. I don't know that. I have no clue what to make of this situation. And then Phoenix, a surprise downgrade from Grayson Allen. So these are a bunch of injury pieces that are kind of in flux for me. I think you want to be early to the party, though. I want to fire this up, but I'm going to call this a lean like lock. I don't think I've done that all season long. Normally, you just have like the like lock. It just seems a little bit advantageous there. But in this situation, Phoenix, we've been attacking them nonstop. 31, 42, and 2. We bet them under 48 and a half wins for the second half of the season, which still looks fantastic, even with that New Orleans loss. Please, Cleveland, bring your full team to the party here. And I would love to get plus six. So if you have a lean, or like, or if you have any idea of Donovan Mitchell plays, use that accordingly. If Donovan Mitchell is somebody you think plays in this game, bet this plus six now. If you don't think that, stay away from it, lean. And I'm somewhere in the middle towards that like territory, although I have not bet this yet. So by default, has to go into the lean category for me. Happy. And that does it for another edition of Lindy's Leans, Likes, and Locks. You know what to do. Go to that comment section below. Let me know your favorite plays that exist on the board for this lovely little nine-game NBA slate we have before you. I tried to talk a little bit faster for you today, give you all the information as best as I could, and also, you know, save you some time here because NBA news, it is crazy. Going to be in that premium Discord talking some bets, talking some plays. Hopefully, hopefully we have ourselves a nice little day. Producer Jacob, thank you so much. Until next time, friends, I'm Eric Lindquist. Best of luck in the NBA streets on Wednesday.